As a registered dietitian who creates content on food, nutrition, and health, today we are going to talk about the different macronutrients and how they actually affect or impact blood sugars for someone living with diabetes. This is very important because if you understand how to pair, select, how to cook, and even how to eat the different macronutrients, you're definitely going to hack blood sugar control. And this will definitely improve your quality of life, reduce the complications that are associated with diabetes, promote longevity, and reduce premature death among other benefits so the first nutrient that you're going to talk about is definitely carbohydrate this is because it is the primary nutrient that actually affects or spikes your blood sugars the main classification of carbohydrates that we have is the simple and the complex carbohydrates basically the simple sugars have the highest glycemic index and they also have like a higher insulin index when you consume a meal that is loaded with simple sugars you're definitely going to need more insulin to actually control your blood sugars afterwards so it is very important for you to try as much as you can to lean towards intake of complex carbohydrates this is basically the whole foods the whole grains vegetables non-refined cereals and such the simple carbohydrates we have the fruit juices that have been highly processed and their fiber content and other nutritional aspects have been removed so they are going to instantly raise your blood sugars we also have the sodas and the carbonated drinks the highly processed things that we buy another thing i'm going to talk about when it comes to carbohydrate is the importance of controlling glycemic load or the carbohydrate loads when you're having your carbohydrate the first thing that you do you select a cooking method something like maybe steaming or maybe boiling that is going to actually help you retain as much nutrients as you can another thing that you can do is actually pairing them with quality fats and proteins this has been shown to reduce directly the glycemic index of that particular carbohydrate let's say you're eating something like ugali you do ugali skuma and avocado and mayai you're going to have a lesser load than someone who has just taken ugali and mala another thing that i'm going to talk about when it comes to carbohydrate is on the importance of understanding the thermic effect of food carbohydrates have moderate thermic effect that is basically between 5 to 10 percent maybe 15 if it goes higher this means that when you consume that carbohydrate your body is going to burn like 5 to 10 percent of that energy that you have consumed from carbohydrate to digest it and that is not something that is so bad for someone maybe struggling with metabolism someone struggling with weight management so if you select foods that are rich in complex carbohydrates you're definitely going to have a better thermic effect because you will need more energy to digest the complex carbohydrates than the simple sugars another thing that you need to understand when it comes to intake of carbohydrates is that carbohydrates will definitely increase your insulin production because you're definitely going to release more glucose and you're going to need more insulin so if you're already struggling with insulin sensitivity it is very important and very paramount that you understand the importance and the need of controlling your carbohydrates another thing that i'm going to talk about is on the portion after preparing the meals well you need to also understand now how your plate is going to need to look like if you're going to actually help yourself control blood sugars let me just draw for you a small illustration here if you are diabetic your plate should look something like this whereby 50% of your intake should come from the non-starchy vegetables. The non-starchy vegetables, we have the green leafy vegetables, we have skooma, terere, lettuce, cucumbers, okra, all those. Then we also have proteins, the different types of meats, and we also have the starchy vegetables, that is basically maybe bananas, potatoes, raw bananas, eh? grains, ugali, and such things. When you're consuming your plate, you need to also ensure that there is intake of quality and healthy fats because they have been shown to be very good in controlling blood sugar so the next macronutrient that i'm going to talk about is protein people who are diabetic have been over consuming protein eh? how can you over consume protein you can over consume protein because the body does not have a mechanism to store excess protein they are going to be converted into glucose and then stored as fat in the process ammonia will be released that is a very toxic gas and the body will have to actually deaminate it make it less toxic so that it can actually be excreted as urea so if you're having issues with blood sugar control if you're having issues with metabolism and then now you come and add an increased production or an increased now release of uric acid you might actually develop complications with your joints and such things then you see your kidney is also trying to overwork so that it can have electrolyte control it can also have blood sugar control so it is very important that you understand that you need to take up adequate intake not over not under because 
protein is very essential in controlling blood sugars this is why protein is the nutrient that is tasked with repair cell synthesis if you are diabetic and you're struggling with uncontrolled blood sugars you might be experiencing chronic inflammation that might cause you cell death and intake of protein to repair is very important the second thing that protein does protein helps with muscle building this improves the glucose storage in your body you see when you have a higher circulating blood sugars this means that your cells have already taken the glucose that they need and now the circulating blood sugar has nowhere to go eh? so when you work on building muscles by doing things like making sure that you're consuming enough protein making sure that you're doing some form of physical exercise you're definitely creating a storage pool for the extra glucose in your body and this will definitely help us in controlling blood sugars the other thing protein has the highest stomach effect from 20 to 30 percent that is a good number so when you consume protein and you're trying to actually work on maybe you have a slow metabolic rate or you're actually struggling with weight you're going to burn more calories from the consumption of protein another thing that protein does protein helps improve insulin sensitivity blood water control that is basically the body fluids electrolytes hormone productions controls or regulates the release of glucagon glucagon is a hormone that actually tells the liver to release or store glucose another thing worth noting when it comes to protein intake is that most protein sources are actually very dense that means they come with other macros other micronutrients for example an egg it comes with protein it comes with fat it comes with vitamin a it comes with iron that is very necessary for blood formation so protein sources are actually divided into two we actually call them either the complete or the incomplete proteins we have the animal sources of protein being the most complete because most of them come with all the 20 essential amino acids that are needed for daily functioning the plant sources can be limiting that is why they are called incomplete proteins and that is why it is very important that you understand the type of protein that you're taking up so that you can actually pair it with a carbohydrate that is going to provide you with the amino that is lacking in the protein so that you can actually have a complete meal and maybe add something like maybe an avocado and maybe cabbages or even skooma to enrich that food to ensure that it is complete with all the macros and all the micronutrients huh? another macronutrient that is very key when it comes to blood sugar control that i'm going to talk about is fats one of the trends that is currently very popular in nutrition is actually overconsumption of fats keto diets like maybe the carnivore and such things so actually intake of healthy fat is very much recommended because it has been shown to improve insulin sensitivity reduce glycemic index of foods maybe you're doing like oats and you're doing them with yogurt you're doing them maybe with cheese or butter they're definitely going to actually help you blood sugars be controlled better another thing fats come with essential nutrients the fat soluble vitamins they also help in the absorption and utilization of these nutrients from other foods that you've taken up if you're taking up a food that is high in vitamin a let's say you're doing carrot and you do something like maybe an avocado carrot and avocado really no you can actually maybe dice them in something like olive oil make humus humus or something like that to ensure that you're actually getting the vitamin a that is needed that is why i started by saying it is very essential for you as an individual to actually understand the importance of knowing the types of foods that you're taking up selecting them right the importance of pairing them right and actually how you're going to eat them so the next thing that i'm going to talk about is on fiber fiber is very very important when it comes to blood sugar control because the first thing is it actually helps with digestion stomach issues and there's a lot of studies that have shown that patients or people living with diabetes usually have a lot of gastrointestinal problems from indigestion constipation infections here and there it is very important to ensure that you are consuming at least four to five different types of fruits and vegetables every day whether you're diabetic or not this is very important because it's going to supply your gut flora with the essential nutrients that is basically the pro and the prebiotics it's going to actually feed them provide an environment for them to repopulate this will definitely help improve on digestion improve on blood sugar control as well because there's a lot of data that has actually shown the importance of having a good gut microbiome and controlling blood sugar through improved and well articulated metabolic process of course if you are struggling with serious issues like maybe the erosion or the gut you need to ensure that you go slow on the consumption of the different fibrous foods and also work with a dietitian so that they can actually help you to ensure that you understand the types of foods that you're taking up and how they are going to react with your body and the condition that you're actually suffering from another macronutrient that i'm going to talk about is water water is very important 
for people struggling with diabetes because one of the signs and symptoms of uncontrolled blood sugar is actually increased thirst and frequent urination. This means that you're going to lose a lot of water and a lot of fluids, ensure that you're taking up broths, you're taking up soups, you're taking up electrolyte sips, natural electrolyte sips. I did a video where I talked about how to make the natural sips. I'll definitely link it so that you can have a look after this. So it is very important that you understand that at the end of the day, you need to ensure that you are working with a plan that is personalized for you as an individual who's struggling with diabetes and maybe other conditions because factors like age, body size, occupation, activity levels, stress patterns, sleep patterns, other diabetes comorbids actually affect or influence how your nutritional intake should be. And that is why at Momina Wellness, we actually have individualized diabetic care plans for you who is struggling with diabetes. We understand the importance of nutritional and dietary adjustments to help you control your blood sugars, to help you live a comfortable life, to help you enjoy the life that you're going to live because you don't want to live long on earth suffering. Who does that? Not us. Eh? So we are definitely going to provide you with a plan that is going to do that that in line with the current medication that you're taking up and that is why when you come to me i'll definitely ask you the type of medication that you're taking we also have a group coaching program for diabetes for anyone struggling with any form of chronic metabolic disorders that goes for 3,000 every month 3,000 kenyan shillings that is basically less than 30 dollars per month and will be with you will work with you for the whole month that you will be in the whatsapp group uh, and also remember to check the links in the description i have a free seven days diabetes friendly that is linked it is available in my website at mominawellness.com so ensure that you rush there and download it for free you can share with someone who's struggling with diabetes you can share this video with someone who has a parent struggling with diabetes thank you so much for watching ensure that you check out this video next whereby i will be talking about understanding the glycemic index the glycemic control insulin control and such things so that you can be able to control your blood sugars more effectively and until next time please don't forget to subscribe like and share and let's meet then bye